Welcome to the general membership meeting of the Pension Fund 1969 of the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. We are glad that you joined us this morning and we uh, hope that our presentation today will uh, inform you and allow you opportunity to ask any questions that you might have and give you an update on what is happening with your pension fund. We are glad to have various guests with us today. We have Kyle Meyer, who is going to uh, speak to us from Element and Element. Uh, we have Paul Robertson, who's going to share the financial report. And here on the platform, we have our executive director, Len Hummel, uh, myself uh, as interim general secretary, Terry Reserve, being the interim chair of the board of directors, and uh, Ruth Stagg helping us with the recording of our minutes. Let's just take a moment and open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your calling on our lives, and we are grateful for the opportunities that you provide us to serve you. We thank you for today, a new day in which we can steward your gifts. We pray that we may do so for your honor and for your glory. And we're grateful for the pension fund. We thank you for the membership of it, those who are current pensioners and those who will be in the future. We thank you for those who give leadership and direction. We thank you for Len and his leadership and uh, careful uh, managing of this fund. And for the board of directors, investment committee, all of those who are such a big part of making this a viable fund that will meet the needs of our pensioners in the future. We pray today as we meet together that you would give us all wisdom, that your presence would be real to us, we would he feel it and recognize it, and we commit this meeting to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So as we said, welcome, thank you for being part of it. And we, our, our first item of business is to move to establish the voting bar. And in order to vote in this session, you must, uh, of course, be an eligible voting member and you need to have registered specifically for this meeting. That registration was uh, unique from your registration for the General Conference. Uh, a link to vote will be sent to all those who provided an email address on their registration. When you registered, uh, I encourage you to go to your email inbox now and open that email with the subject line ready to vote. Uh, if it's missing, of course, uh, make sure you check your junk mail or spam folder. It may have gotten into there. Email comes from our platform, Simply Voting, with the name Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. And after that email opens, you simply click on the link that takes you directly into the Simply Voting platform. We'll continue to use that platform throughout our meeting, and uh, you'll be able to refresh your ballot simply by pressing the home button on the Simply Voting homepage. If you lose the page or Simply Voting says it's timed out, then simply head back to the original email and open the link again. You may receive multiple emails to vote on different ballots, but just continue to use the link in any of those emails and click the home button on the Simply Voting platform to see the active and upcoming ballots. If you're joining us here in person, you will need your personal device to vote and you'll need to have data on that to access the internet. If you need a device, I believe we have some available and probably can help you out in that manner. Joining us online, again, you're encouraged to use just uh, two different devices to participate, one to vote and one to participate in the live stream and the other Hoover conference features. Uh, but you must be able to access your email on the device that you're using for voting. You're joining from a laptop or desktop computer, and you're signed in to the Hoover app from a web browser, then using one device as possible by switching between the internet tabs and the apps as you need them. As a reminder, voting privileges are only given to those who have registered prior to the deadline of 12 midnight central time in, on May 10th. And uh, throughout the meeting, our ballots will be declared open by the chair and then closed at the completion of the timer be recorded on the live stream screen. Uh, we will be using uh, multi-vote balloting for some of our voting, and for each ballot, again, the ballots will be declared closed at the end of the timer. 
So let's begin with the first ballot to establish the voting bar. The voting bar will be designated by those who have received uh, this first ballot at their provided unique email address. And I declare the ballot to establish a voting bar now open. We'll give you time to do that voting and we will uh, begin the timer to count down. There's a two minute delay on the ballot. Apologies from the back. Okay. Okay, it's just a little delay, they're working on that. Um, let, let me talk about the opportunity for questions. There'll be numerous opportunities throughout the meeting today for questions uh, after uh, various presentations. And uh, we would encourage you to use the Whova app and go to the resource tab that has the category live email and use that to submit your questions. Of course, if you're here on site, you can do that by going to one of the mics that have been set up here. But if you're online or even here present, you can use that live email tab. You just simply click on the box and it will be a form to complete to submit your questions to the chair. We have being monitored and uh, they will provide it to us for, and will be forwarded either to the chair or the chair will ask the appropriate people to respond at the appropriate time. So even if you have questions that you think you might have later on, you can submit them now and we will hold them until the appropriate time in the business session. So this live email is where you can participate in terms of asking questions. for our email to come through. I haven't received one yet either. No. Okay, I believe that should have come through to you now. I have received it on my device here and moving to the simply voting application. Your ballot comes up. You have a choice to vote in favor or opposed. Click on continue. It takes you to the next page where you click on confirm and you get that signal saying you're successful. If we could set up the other ballot as quickly as possible, then we will move to the other items on there. Okay, so while you're processing that, could move on to the next ballot, which is uh, the next item is the approval of the agenda. We'll bring a slide up that will show the uh, agenda for today's meeting. We will have uh, introduction welcome, which is already done, establish the voting bar, approval of the agenda. We have the minutes from the 2020 general meeting and from the, we will have the 2021 financial report. We have the executive director's report, a report from our actuary, and then closing marks and adjournment. If I could have someone move the acceptance of this agenda, just wave at me here. We got it in the seconder. Good. It is on the floor. And again, we will move to the ballot. I hope our
tech people are able to keep up with us here. They'll be sending through, again, either an email or you can simply refresh your page by, in, when you're in the Simply Voting app by clicking on the home button at the top left of your page. Again, if you can't find that site, make sure you go back and uh, click the original email that you received and it'll take you back to the web again. Click on that email and bring it, that Simply Voting up app up again. The agenda, the minutes, financial report will all be part of a multi-vote ballot, so we will continue to move on. The minutes of the 2020 Pension Fund General Meeting have been posted to the Pension Portal. Uh, this has been communicated to all our pension members in various communications leading up to this meeting. Uh, if I could have a mover to receive the or approve the minutes and a seconder. Good, thank you. We will be voting for, on that as part of the multi vote ballot in a moment. Again, if there are questions and you're with us online, go to the Hoover app to the live email and you can submit questions there. I don't know if there are any questions from the floor on those items. Okay, seeing none, we'll continue. Now move to the presentation of the financial report. This will be given to us by Paul Robertson today. We'll ask Paul to come to the podium microphone and present that. And again, if, as this is presented, if there are questions, just go to the Hoover app and on that live email, submit your question. Thank you, Paul. All right, good morning. So overall, the pension fund had a very successful year in 2021. We ended the year with the total assets of 162.3 million compared to 149.4 million the previous year. So the $12.9 million increase um, was substantially higher than the previous year of only 6.9 million. Now, this strong result was a direct res result of the strong equity market it's in 2021. Um, in 2021, our investment income was $14.9 million, which included $4.6 million of unrealized gains. In 2020, the equity markets were more impacted uh, by the start of the pandemic, and therefore the re returns were not at the same levels. Our pension contributions and payouts continue to be close to plan, and as our fund matures, we should expect that the payouts exceed our annual contributions. However, our investment income continues to be strong and accounts for the difference. All of our core ratios are within the acceptable ranges. From an expense perspective, our pension fund continues to be well managed and there are no concerns at all at this time. As we compare our results from the past two years, we can see the strong investment income we earned in 2021, both realized and unrealized gains. So if you switch to the next slide, there we go. Our realized gains were 30% higher than the previous two years. As well, our unrealized gains were in line with our pre-pandemic levels of 4.6 million. As previously noted, our, as our pension fund matures, we are seeing an increased level of pension payouts, which is important for our investment activities to offset this increase. As we look forward to 2022, we expect the war in the Ukraine and, and, and the inflationary pressures we are all experiencing will have a negative impact on our 2022 re financial results. The first quarter of 2022 has been challenging, uh, where the major financial indices decreased significantly which did lower our overall assets invested. However, 
Uh, we're starting to see, in March, we're starting to see an improvement. April has been a little bit of a, uh, in the early part of May has been, again, a little bit of a challenging time. As a result, this requires us to closely monitor our investment portfolio, ensure that our investments are adequately diversified, and minimize the volatility we are currently seeing in the financial markets. That said, 2021 was an outstanding year, which does provide some financial buffer. In conclusion, 2021 was a strong financial year for the pension fund. The audited financial post, er, statements have been posted to the pension portal and the Whova app. If, the, if you have not yet reviewed, had a chance to review them. So therefore, at this point, Mr. Chair, I'd like to move the acceptance of my report. Thank you, Paul. Can we have a seconder for that motion, please? Thank you. Good. Um, as you're preparing your questions and thinking about them, I understand the uh, ballot for establishing or approving the agenda has come through to your email. So I encourage you to go back to your Simply Voting app, Re either refresh by clicking on the home button or starting over again by clicking on the email link that you received. And then you have an option to uh, either be in favor or opposed to the motion. Make your selection, click continue. and then confirm. Okay, any questions with regard to the financial report? Again, as we pointed out yesterday at the general conference, the uh, equity returns were very good last year. And uh, I, I would be surprised. I don't know that we'll uh, repeat those, Lynn. We'll, uh, we'll see how the year progresses. I'm sure our actuary will be able to help us with that. No questions? Not hearing any? Let's move on with the financial report. So let's move to the executive director's report. We ask Len to come and make the presentation. Uh, again, if you have any questions regarding the Lens report as it's given, uh, just be quick to submit them either through the Hoover app or be ready to come to a microphone and, and ask them. We want to give ample time for people to ask any questions they may have that arise out of these matters that we're presenting today. So please feel free to ask your questions. So Len, we look forward to your report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It is a privilege to present my report to the members of the POC Pension Fund and to those who are contemplating membership in the plan. As you know, the Pension Fund is a defined benefit plan that provides a fixed lifetime pension to the member and their surviving spouse, if applicable. We are very thankful for the strong results in 2021, even during the uncertainty caused by the pandemic. In 2021, favorable results were experienced for change in assets, ROI and equities ROI. Please note minor corrections following the latest review last night. Total ROI should, should be showing as 9.6% and ROI equities should show as 21.9% for 2021 rather than what is showing on the screen so that this represents just minor adjustments. Please accept apologies for this late change. Membership has remained stable in the 2400 member range. Assets have grown year after year since 2008 to 162.3 million in 2021. The portfolio has reduced to 159.9 million as at March 2022, based on our latest numbers, and has likely reduced further since then given the decline in the equity markets, but still well ahead of where the portfolio was in 2020. We expect the markets will come back in the near to midterm as what one usually can expect with the, the way the markets work. Our portfolio consists of the following. Church and ministry mortgages at 
other fixed income investments at 21%, such that total fixed income investments represent 67% of the portfolio. Equities are at 32%. This is as at December 31st, 2021. The pension fund continues to invest in church and ministry mortgages to support and advance the kingdom. Our total amount of mortgages have reduced by 8.9 million year over year from 84 million last year. Due to COVID and uncertainty regarding in-person church attendance, we saw few requests for financing towards construction or renovations, which is certainly understandable given the current environment. As we hopefully move beyond COVID, your church may be looking for financing towards construction, renovations, or refinancing. If so, please reach out to us using the contact info to be provided at the end of this presentation. Our actuaries, Element Consulting Group, have conducted expert analysis for us. Our going concern surplus has grown from 12.9 million in 2019 to an estimated surplus of 18.7 million in 2021. Similarly, our going concern ratio is becoming more robust, growing from 110% in 2019 to an estimated 113.7% in 2022. The risk of special contributions has significantly reduced because the defined benefit pension fund was designated in 2020 as a specified Ontario multi-employer pension plan, which means we only have to fund a going concern deficit, whereas previously we had to fund both a going concern deficit and a solvency deficit. A going concern deficit is less likely to occur than a solvency deficit in the current economic environment, thereby we have lower risk of special contributions going forward. The board and our actuaries are still required to monitor both going concern and solvency positions when considering providing cost of living allowances, increased benefits, or repaying churches for past special contributions. To date, unfortunately, we're not in a position to take such action without potentially compromising on the future financial health of the plan. We are striving to achieve these levels where we can provide such such types of uh, benefits that we'd like to see that we would like to provide for you folks going forward. We're striving to achieve these levels and look very much forward to the day when we can provide cost of living allowances or other benefits. The defined benefit pension plan offers a solid base to assist in meeting the retirement needs of staff who have given of their lives to faithfully serve God and their communities. If you have inquiries about your specific circumstances, please reach out to us using the contact info on the screen. Mr. Chair, I would like to move acceptance of my report, please. Thank you, Lynn. Do we have a seconder for that report? Thank you. Again, your questions are welcomed. In fact, we did receive one through our online uh, participant. It comes from Pierre Perezzi. And uh, he's asking, can we postpone taking retirement at 65? And could it be advantageous to do so? We've got uh, Karen Meyer, our executive assistant for the pension fund, and she's going to come and answer that question here at our podium mic. It's great to have these expert resources. For me, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, you can postpone taking your pension and can continue to contribute past 65. The latest you can take it is the December in the year in which you turn 71. Okay, thank you, Karen. Uh, so you have a choice of taking it early retirement at 55, you can take it at 65, or as Karen has said, you can defer it to, to age 71. Whether or not it would be advantageous, uh, we're not really in a position to give financial planning advice here, so you would need to contact your financial planner and see what advantage or not great advantage it would be to you to do that. Those are, those are very dependent upon your personal financial situation. So uh, we look for you to con contact the people who can help you with that. We do have some voting results. Are establishing our meeting. Those in favor, according to this report, it says triple X. I, I don't have the gift interpretation for that one. We may have to go back to the tally. No. 
and see who this was 100%. see what the numbers mean. But we do have approval of the agenda, 100% in favor. So thank you for that one. We'll, we'll get we'll get the right numbers and see what those X's mean. I'm assuming it's probably 100, but uh, you never assume. So. Any, any further questions on the director's report? Thank you, Len, for providing that information to us. Well, if there's any more that have come in online, we thank you for those that are participating online to be asking their questions. And if there's anyone here on the floor, we'd be happy to entertain those questions as well. If not, then we will move to a multi-vote ballot and we would hope that it uh, will come through to you. I'm going to press my home button, and uh, at the appropriate time, it'll come through us. You'll have the three items on this ballot, the financial statement, the, the minutes, the financials, and the report of the executive director. You will be able to vote in favor or opposed to any or each of those items and uh, we will receive that as soon as it's available to us. Oh, there we go. We do have a meeting. It was approved 100 percent, 21 ballots cast and all in favor. So thank you. We will wait for the email that will allow us to go to the procedural ballot, which, uh, as I said, except the minutes, financial report, and the executive director's report. As soon as that comes up, we will move to that ballot. In the meantime, we are very happy to have Kyle Meyer from uh, Element and Element here. And we're going to ask him to come at this time and provide a report of the actuary and bring us up to date on their uh, findings with regard to our pension plan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me today. It's great to be back in person after two years of virtual meetings. My name is Kyle Mayer. I'm the Senior VP of Actuarial Services with Element Consulting Group. Today I'll be providing a pension fund update, and I'll also be discussing the reduced probability of requiring special payments moving forward. We'll be looking at the financial position as of December 31st, 2021, and then I'll be closing with some future considerations. You may remember from the 2020 AGM, we announced the conversion of the plan to a specified Ontario multi-employer pension plan also known as a SOMEP. Essentially, its status as a SOMEP allows the plan to more appropriately be funded on an ongoing and long-term basis, also known as a going concern basis. The transition to a SOMEP allowed the plan to stop funding the provision for adverse deviation on the going concern balance sheet, the provision for adverse deviation on the normal actuarial cost, and the hypothetical wind-up or solvency deficit. So these terms are quite technical in nature, so I'm going to try and help provide some clarity around them. As mentioned, the going concern basis is the continued operation of the plan into the future. This means that members continue to join the plan, accrue a pension under the plan, and then subsequently terminate or retire at a future date. The hypothetical wind-up or the solvency position, on the other hand, is short-term in nature. This means that the plan is assumed to terminate on the valuation date, accruals will cease, and then we would settle those liabilities through a lump sum payment to the members or the purchase of annuities with, in, with insurance companies, and then that insurance company would continue to make the payment into the future. The provision for adverse deviation is a legislated amount essentially acting as a margin that was required to be funded by the plan. The conversion to a SOMEP has supported the reduction in the probability of requiring special payments, or additional contributions in the future. As a SOMEP, as already mentioned, the plan is no longer required to fund that provision for adverse deviation on the going concern balance sheet or the solvency deficit. The plan's trustees are now fully responsible for determining the amount of margin that's appropriate for the plan. This provides the trustees with the flexibility to meet the plan's individual risk tolerances 
and to better manage the sustainability into the future. At the last valuation date, when we last analyzed the contributions in detail, the plan had a healthy contribution margin. The contribution margin basically helps the plan save for a rainy day, which means for a pension plan, it might include a downturn in the financial markets, as we're currently experiencing right now, a drop in interest rates, or any other adverse experience. In the event that the going concern position moves into a deficit, the contribution margin will be able to help offset a portion or potentially all of the special payments that would be, that would be required, depending on the amount. Although not a guarantee, the participating employers should take comfort in these changes and the continued improvement of the plan's sustainability. The improvement, as Len has mentioned, has in part been due to the strong investment performance in 2021. Combined with rising interest rates, the plan's financial position as of December 31st, 2021, both on a going concern and a hypothetical wind-up solvency position, has improved. On a going concern basis, after asset smoothing, the plan's funded position improved to 113.7% at the end of 21, compared to 111.5% at the prior year end. For reference, asset smoothing is a tool used to reduce the volatility from investment performance. Essentially, when investment returns are good, the asset smoothing allows us to hold back some of those gains in anticipation that they're going to be lower in the future. And on the other hand, if returns are worse than expected, asset smoothing will write up our assets in anticipation that uh, the markets will perform better in the future. As a benchmark, the pension plan uses the discount rate of 5% as its threshold. This means that returns above 5% are saved to offset times for when returns are below 5%. And we look at a five-year period when we're doing the asset smoothing. On a hypothetical wind-up basis, the plan has, has improved the wind-up ratio to 90.8% compared to 80.9% at the end of 2020. The large change is due to, in combination, the asset performance in 2021 and rising interest rates. As a note, the plan's liabilities move in the opposite direction of interest rates. So if interest rates go up, we would expect the plan's liabilities to go down. And on the other hand, if interest rates go down, we would expect the plan's liabilities to go up. The chart in the PowerPoint deck illustrates the change in the plan's financial position since 2011. As you can see, the going concern position in blue has consistently improved. The gradual improvement has been driven primarily by strong asset returns above the discount rate above of 5%. The plan design changes that took place in 20, between 2011 and 2015, and the contribution margin and special payments that were remitted to fund the plan's deficit over that time. The hypothetical wind-up position depicted in orange, although volatile, volatile from year to year due to changes in the interest rates, has improved since 2011 as well. The overall improvement can be attributed to the performance of the assets over that 10-year period and special payments that were remitted to the fund, and that was partially offset by interest rates that were lower <coughs> at this point in time. The improvement... Next slide, please. The improvement of the plan's financial position and the underlying sustainability is extremely positive, and we recognize this achievement. That being said, although the financial position has improved over the last 10 years, we remain cautiously optimistic as we look into the future. Our caution is fueled by volatility in the financial markets due to supply chain disruptions, conflict in Eastern Europe, geopolitical conflict and sanctions due to the Russian invasion. Major indices, such as the TSX or the S&P 500, are down as much as 15% so far in 2022. A bull market that's long in the tooth, potentially marking the end of an economic cycle, and inflationary pressures, leading central banks to increase interest rates, further putting stress on growth in the economy. The plan does have some mechanisms in place to help partially offset the adverse financial impacts, such as asset smoothing, contribution margin, 
and margin in the discount rate. In addition, a target asset allocation that appears to be well positioned to hedge against inflation. However, future economic outlooks remain challenging. The plan's financial position will continue to be monitored as it navigates this economic storm. Changes to the plan's design, such as cost of living allowances, benefit improvements, or contribution holidays are not advisable in the current environment. And we recommend the plan continues its current path until the economic uncertainty eases. A final reminder to all participating employers in the plan, our regulator requires that employer and employee contributions must be remitted within 30 days of the month that they are payable. So for example, if employee and employer contributions are due May of 2022, they must be remitted to the fund by June 30th of 2022. Please keep this in mind when managing cash flow positions. And with that, I will be passing the mic back. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the membership and the trustees for the ongoing support they put in our firm as the plan continues its path towards sustainability. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kyle. If you just stay there for a moment, we'll entertain questions. Uh, do have someone move the acceptance of the actuarial report and a seconder. Uh, while, while you're preparing your questions, whether they be from our online audience or here in person, let me direct your attention to the recent email that you received with uh, the title conference items. It'll pull up the opportunity for you to vote on the three procedural business items, the minutes of the 2020 general meeting, the financial report for 2021, and the report of the executive director. Go to your Simply Voting app, uh, click on the home button or do it directly from the email you received. There will be three votes to make on each one on each of those items. Make your selection, click continue, take you to the next page where you click confirm and receive that joyous response that you've been successful. So I declare that ballot open and we will tabulate the results of your voting. Any, any questions for our actuary? We've had a great relationship with Element and Element and are very glad to have them helping us out with the pension fund. Uh, microphone, not sure whether it's one or two, but uh, Phil? Sure. Thanks, Mr. Chairman, and appreciate all the information. Very good. A question that I have is regarding the demographics of the membership and how if and how that affects the uh, plan going forward, considering we have a probably a large segment that are uh, boomers, whatever we want to be calling ourselves, but uh, how does that affect the, uh, the plan going forward? Yes, yeah, so that's a great question. So I don't have the specific demographics available with me right here today, uh, but generally as uh, memberships or demographics of pension plans, specifically defined benefit pension plans, uh, begin to age and the average active age of the plan gets older, the cost of new accruals, or what we call the normal actuarial costs, so when you accrue a new pension under the plan, there's an associated increase in the liability for those new pension accruals every year, and the increase in that liability is called the normal actuarial cost. So as the average age of the active membership starts to increase, we would see an increase of the cost of those benefits as people are nearing retirement. What also happens when the demographic begins to age, the plans become more mature. And so what that means is you have more liability as a, um, a deferred or a retiree pensions and payment. The, the liability becomes bigger in those areas than compared to your actives. And that's just a normal progression of a defined benefit pension plan. And we continue to monitor that consistently. What happens is when you have that bigger liability, you have less contributions coming in in regards to it because you don't have those active people working anymore. But that's something that we do continuously monitor, uh, but it is a typical progression for a DB plan. Good. We have another question from the floor here. Uh, Jim? Jim Richards, uh, my question was exactly the same as Phil's, but let me just spin it slightly differently. Um, at what point does the viability of the plan be affected by the boomers, i.e., when does that increase risk decline, i.e., the boomers have been factored in? So it's consent, so we, we do actuarial evaluations right now on a triannual basis. So the last one that we officially did was December 31st, 2019. 
we continuously look at and factor in the, the change in the demographics based on the new data at each valuation date. But when we're looking at it, there's two ways to look at the sustainability of a defined benefit pension plan. There's the going concern and the solvency balance sheets. And when we're talking about the funded ratios, the estimated funded ratio on the going concern basis at the end of 21 was 113.7%. And so that's looking at all the pensions that have been accrued up to that date. And so it is sustainable. We have enough money saved to pay those pensions or those individuals until retirement, whether they're pensions and payment, individuals that are still active accruing benefits, everything that's been accrued up to the end of 21, we have sufficient money and a surplus available to fund those into the future based on our assumptions. The second way to look at the sustainability is looking into the future, and we do that through the contributions. So the contributions coming into the plan every year, we measure that against that normal actual cost or the cost of new accruals for the year. And the contributions coming in are greater than the cost or the increase in the liability every year. So we also have a contribution margin. So on both bases, when we're looking at the sustainability of the DB plan, we're sustainable at the current state. And we continue to monitor that on a triannual annual basis to make sure that we don't go out of sync with the fundability or the sustainability as we move forward. And we have changes in the demographics through that time period. Hope that helps answer your question. Thank you, Kyle. Those, those are good questions, and this is the guy to ask. So if you've got other questions, we'd be glad to entertain them. Another one coming to the mic here. Go ahead, please. Good morning. My name is Aaron from uh, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. What happens if we're heading into a bear market for four years, uh, also a recession? and we need to offset the losses of the 2021 gains, which could very quickly happen. And, um, and a lot of our rural churches have been closed or even start struggling intensely. And churches are not able to make the supplementary contributions. What happens in that kind of a, <clears throat> that kind of a scenario? Uh, because it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's looking more and more like it's a high likelihood of a bear market for yeah. uh, so, a few so that's years. A, a great question. Uh, thank you for it. So as we're looking at the sustainability moving forward, uh, there are, we are either in a recession or moving into a recession. You'll get different opinions on that. But we have what's called a diversified asset mix or asset allocation. And so we're not fully invested in, in the financial market or the equity markets. And we are able to help hedge against bear, market, bear markets or recessions by holding other assets such as you know, fixed income items, church mortgages, private debt and private credit, which can still, which have a low correlation to the equity market, so can still be producing positive gains. So at the end of Q1, and, and Len uh, may be able to correct me, uh, I believe the plan returned negative 0.9%. Uh, so that was able to withstand uh, a big drop in the equity markets, which were you know, in the range of up to 10% so far at the end of Q1, um, by having positive returns through those mortgages, through that private debt, still providing uh, income to the plan over that period. So I think the plan is well positioned, given the asset mix, to withstand a recession in a bear market. We also have other tools, as I mentioned, in place. We have a surplus on the balance sheets. We have asset smoothing that currently is a write down so we're, we have had good uh, investment experience over the past five years, so we're writing down the assets in anticipation that we might have to give some back, and we've seen that so far in 2022. And so that asset smoothing will decrease and potentially move into a write-up to help smooth out the position over that time period. So the contribution, cert, or the contribution margin is also something that's um, going to be helping us through this time of, of down market. So uh, thank you very much for the question. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, our asset allocation is conservative compared to uh, what uh, a lot of pension plans would have their assets invested into. So as at December 31st, 2021, we had 32% of our assets invested in equities. Typically, pension plans will 
in the past would be a 60-40 ratio, 60 equities, 40 uh, fixed income. Uh, we are the other way around, so we do have a built-in conservatism in our asset mix, so that protects us. And then on the fixed income side, uh, we're thankful that church mortgages are generally very safe. The pension fund has not ever lost money on a church mortgage. There has been a time where, say, the PAOC has had to kick in, but there's never been money lost in a church mortgage. So we're very safe in terms of our fixed income investments. We have some also invested in alternatives, and so far the track record has also been very good and uh, from a, a risk per perspective, low risk. So we feel we're positioned fairly well from an asset mix perspective to withstand uh, a, real, a real significant drop in the market. And then we don't know for sure. You can never tell how things are going to go. Who would have known uh, the way things have gone in the last couple of years? We wouldn't have predicted this. Uh, but here we are, in the mark, and our, our plan is fairly strong. Uh, we don't know where things are going to go in the future. We feel we're well positioned, and we trust God that he'll carry us through. Yeah, what's the thing? The past performance is no guarantee of future results. Any other questions? I don't know if the chair is allowed to ask one, but Kyle, can you comment on fluctuations in the bond rate and how that would affect our uh, pension plan? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I did mention in the presentation, so the underlying liabilities when we're calculating those liabilities, they're just future pension streams. So we're expecting at some point in time, someone's gonna retire from the plan and, and get paid out on a monthly basis, is monthly basis into the future. So the way we get that liability is we discount all those future pension payments with an interest rate. The higher the interest rate we use, the lower the liability, and the, the, lower, the, li the lower the interest rate we use, the higher the liability. The same thing happens with bonds. Bonds are just future payments, future coupon payments in the future, and they're present value back to get a value of your bonds or your fixed income today. So bonds really operate similarly to a pension plan, those future payments discounted back today. So same thing, if interest rates are going up, the bonds that you hold in your portfolio are going to go down, and if the interest rates go down, the bonds or your fixed income allocation is going to go up. Right now, what we've seen is that interest rates are going up, so any bonds or fixed income instruments that you're holding as assets, those are going to go down, but we've seen a, lo a bigger decrease in the liabilities of the plan than the asset amount. So I would expect, without doing any analysis, right now the solvency hypothetical wind-up position would be significantly better than we were seeing at the end of 21, even though we're in a uh, down market in the equities. So the increase in interest rates has been advantageous to pension plans on a solvency basis. That's great. Uh, Jared. Uh, Jared Clark from here at Calvary Temple. Um, the scariest thing, like was sort of said, is the special payments. And uh, maybe it would be helpful to comment on how that is sort of determined, when the valuations are done, what are opportunities as a pension plan to sort of guarantee that stability for three years as we do those valuations. It might be helpful for you to comment on that. Yes, thanks, Jared. Uh, that's a great comment. So when we, our actual evaluation reports that we file, those are filed with the regulators and they determine the required funding of the plan. And so we either, as I mentioned earlier, do it on an annual or a triannual basis. Right now we're on a triannual basis. The next actuarial evaluation report is only required at the end of 2022, but the trustees are considering filing early. They do have that flexibility. And so we can file a valuation at the end of December 31st, 2021, which means we won't have to file again till the end of 24, and we would do that work in 2025. So that provides us a new three-year period to monitor the economic markets, to monitor the bond markets, the interest rates, the sustainability of the plan as we move forward. And I think it's something, given what we've seen now uh, at the beginning of 2022, that uh, will be discussed at, at the next meeting. So um, that also helps us reduce the probability of requiring special payments. 
The only way we would require special payments is if our going concern position decreased below zero. And as mentioned, we're currently on a, a raw market basis, just over 118% funded. And so as Len said, we just have over 30% equities. Um, the equities you know, would have to go down by over half in order for us, assuming all the other investments stay the same or, or go up, before we would move into um, a going concern deficit that would have to be funded. Further, if there is a going concern deficit, we do have a contribution margin, and so that contribution margin can help offset some of those special payments as well. So the plan is well positioned right now to withstand what's currently happening in the markets, and we have the ability to uh, file evaluation early, as I mentioned, at the end of 21, which will give us a new three-year period to monitor as we move forward. I do have one question that came through the uh, online question asking. Uh, it says, what happens, it comes from Dale Sanger, uh, New Life Church, what happens if a person leaves the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada, can the funds they have in the pension fund remain without additional contributions? Did you want to answer that, Lander? Sure. The answer is yes, funds will remain in the POC pension fund and will be available to them at normal retirement age. There's further detail to that, and if you wish, we can get into further detail uh, and feel free to contact us as well. But that's the uh, basic answer to that. Okay. Thank you, Kyle. Thank Appreciate you very much. your input. It's always good to have Element here. <laughs> we do have the results of our procedural business ballot. Uh, there were 35 ballots cast on each of those three, and all of them received 100% in favor. So we have the approval of the minutes from 2020, we have the approval of the audit financial statement from 21, and we have the acceptance of the executive director's report. Thank you for your participation in that. Anything else, uh, Mr. Director? There is a, another question that has come, and uh, Kyle, you maybe uh, wish to also respond to this. Here's a question from Zachary Sloboda. Pension fund question. I'm a millennial paying into the pension fund and won't retire for 30 plus years. Will there be enough money left in the fund for my age group when I retire? If we manage the fund well, and uh, by the time you retire, Zachary, it will be different people. Yes, there will be enough in, in the fund. Uh, that is our goal. The goal is sustainability. And we do intend that uh, there will be sufficient funds for people of any age who enter uh, into the plan, that there will be sufficient funds when they retire. And good on you, Zachary. More people at your age that join into the plan, the healthier the plan will be. So we do encourage uh, the, the younger credential holders and younger employees of churches and ministries to join in and continue to make the plan a stable, and sustainable plan going forward. Thanks for your question. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, we, we actually did a, uh, an analysis with Element a few years ago where we projected 30 years in advance. And we used a very conservative return rate, probably half of what the average has been over the last 50 years. We used a very uh, stable contribution rate and when we came to the end of our 30-year projections, there was still surplus in the fund, having paid out all of the pensions. So the pension fund is very stable. Uh, people can join, can contribute with confidence, and know that uh, there will be something there for them, should the Lord tarry. That's the other part of it. Well, thank you for participating in our meeting today. That is our full agenda. Uh, the actuarial report is simply presented to us. There's no need for a vote of acceptance or approval on that. If post-meeting you think of a question, don't be afraid to send it in to the pension fund. They will be gathering those. They'll be posting their responses on the pension portal, and they'll be accessible to you there. 
or they may even just respond directly to your email with your questions. So at any time, feel free to ask questions. Uh, Karen is always available to respond to people's inquiries, and we're glad to have people ask questions. It, it's, it's your pension fund, and we need you to be fully informed, fully aware, and confident that it is indeed accomplishing what it's set out to do. So with that in mind, we thank you. We thank Calvary Temple for helping us, us to Bruce Martin, Jared, and the team. And uh, we will see you at the next general meeting of the Pension Fund. We declare this meeting adjourned.